Hello and welcome to Bristol Reptile and Porum's YouTube channel. I'm Gail and I'm Michelle and today we thought we would do a little video on scorpions. So this is just going to be an introductory video about the species as there are just so many different ones. We haven't picked a certain species, we're just going to do an all overview. So Michelle, can you give us a quick overview of what you think of them? I personally think they're amazing invertebrates. Um, they're part of like the reasons why I started keeping and getting into the hobby, which is for me is fantastic. They're fascinating animals. Obviously, they're venomous. They use their venomous venom as part of their feeding mechanism, and to watch them as a predatory insect, they're great. Wow. Okay. So we'll go. In, we'll try to do a little bit of detail about scorpions as an overview. So can you tell us how long they would live as general? approximately three to five years but it does vary on species right, okay and what sort of sizes can they get to so you can get some species which are like teeny tiny yeah. which is awesome um, and then you get some species which are actually quite big quite chunky in size and we're going to run some images through the video so that you can see some different species and the variation between the species um, but yeah some of the bigger ones you're looking like a good four to five inches realistically for mm. an adult can get good to a good size then and what type of food do they eat? So they're predatory insects, so they are hunting other insects basically, um, which when you, if you ever get the opportunity to see them feed, it is fantastic. Obviously the venom is positioned in the tail, they bring the tail up over the body, use the pincers to grab the food item, and then the venom is part of the feeding, it helps with the digestive. Okay, and how often would they eat? Um, so that really is going to depend on where the scorpion is in its life cycle and um, yeah, and depends what body processes it's got going on. So sometimes scorpions can gorge feed where they'll feed quite frequently and that could be a couple of times a week. And then sometimes they'll have prolonged periods where they don't take in much nutrients at all and that could go on for quite a long period of time. So it will vary massively throughout their lifespan. Can you handle scorpions? So there are some species that we would advise you never handle. Okay. It, they're just not worth the risk. They are venomous, the toxicity varies massively. In the UK there are some species that have to have licensing to be kept. Obviously we're not looking at any of those. We're looking at the slightly milder toxicity. But like any animal which, which has venom or a sting as it were, you as an individual will react differently to it. So what, how one person reacts, the same as a bee or a wasp thing, will be very different to another. And uh, with that in mind, we do need to take some care. So you'll see from some of the clips that we run into this video that there are images of us handling some of them. And that's that individual scorpion, mild toxicity, good nature. But there'll be some other ones which are slightly higher toxicity, maybe not have such a good nature that we wouldn't pick up. <laughs> <laughs> Good to know. Uh, so, if you the ones that you can handle, is there a better time or um, how often that type of thing? So, really, we're observing body language when we're um, being involved in handling. The scorpions are very good at sh physically showing us whether they want to be handled or not. Um, they can show signs of defence and also aggression, and we need to judge that as an individual, like we would with lots of other animals. Um, so, it's really being aware of the body language and um, yeah, and just taking that into account. Ready? Okay.
So we've got our scorpion, um, we've got it home, we know if we can or cannot handle it. What type of enclosure would we house in? This is going to vary massively again depending on the species. Most of them we would house either in a glass or a plastic slash acrylic type enclosure because they are smaller animals so they don't need massive enclosures. But where it originates from and um, the environment that it's found within is going to reflect how we set the enclosure up. So this is something that you need to look at each individual species. And lots of research should be done into this before you get your animal. Because obviously it's no good doing a desert setup if you've got a, um, a forest species in comparison. Because the setup is very different. So we do need to make sure that when we're, we're looking at scorpions, we're checking where they come from, the habitat they like to be in, obviously because that's going to affect humidity levels um, and things like that. And also the suitable suitability of different types of substrates and uh, decor and things like that. Okay. So as you said, they all they come from very different places over the world. What sort of heat would we need to provide? So in the UK, obviously we have seasonal change. Um, so that does mean that at times, um, for some species, our um, room temperature may be close to what they require. But it also means we've got the flip of that as well. There will be times when our room temperature is not what they require because they're not found within the UK. Most of the species that we're looking at are found in considerably warmer environments and it's rare for the UK to reach those temperature parameters. Occasionally it happens, but not, <laughs> not very often, let's say that. So we have to be mindful of this. Uh, so in conjunction with that, there is different heating equipment that we would would use to maintain the required temperatures for the different species and that's something depending on the enclosure size that you should be looking at uh, the suitability for different systems that are available um, and also your room temperature as well so it can be really useful if you're thinking of getting a scorpion to pop a thermometer in the area you want to keep it in for a while first to give you an indication of the ambient air temperature and that way you can work out it makes it easier to work out what size heating equipment you might need for that animal. Okay. Do we provide water? So they are an invertebrate and as we talked about in lots of our other videos, invertebrates um, we need to take care when we're providing water. We need to make sure that when we do that the um, container is smaller than the leg span of the animal because we don't want it to fall in, struggle to get out and drown basically. Um, there is also things like the bug gel and the hydro jellies that we can use as well. Some people like to use them with um, scorpions, some people don't. It's personal preference, there's nothing wrong with that at all. But hydration is important and for some of the forest dwelling species, they will need higher humidity. So we will need to introduce like light mist into the enclosure as well. Okay. So from what you've heard today, you can see that the scorpions can be amazing pets to keep and fascinating to watch. But we obviously just have to be aware that they are such a wide variety. We've got to make sure we provide the right enclosure and also be aware that they, they have, do have venom, venom and there can be different levels of toxicity. Thank you for watching Bristol Reptile Emporium's YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe and we look forward to seeing you next week for another video. Bye. Bye.